So keys to understanding thyroid, the pituitary is different than every other tissue in the body. Um, so different diatonies in the pituitary than peripheral tissues. Different thyroid transporters. Again, we'll talk that about, more about that in the Lyme lecture. There's different high sensitivity receptors in the, in the pituitary. And the pituitary generally does not become thyroid resistant. And the, the T3 in the, uh, the T3 level in the pituitary actually has an inverse correlation to the T3 in the rest of the body. So again, studies show that any sickness, inf inflammation, physiologic stress, emotional stress, you get a decrease in TSH, decrease in T4. But T4 usually stay the same because it doesn't get into the, into the cells, the more inflammation. T3 goes down, then you get increase, reverse T3. You get a you get down regulation of diatonase type 1 is the main diatonase that converts T4 to T3 in the body. Type 2 converts in the pituitary. Type 3 converts T4 to reverse T3, which then blocks the thyroid, makes everything worse. So reduce T3 and T3 transport into the tissue. Uh, and again, that's, we'll talk about transport more a little later. So the more severe the illness or stress, the worse that becomes. So all these, and, and these will actually, call, the references here are, I sent a bunch of articles, review articles on thyroid hormone transport and diatonase activity, so they're here somewhere, uh, maybe at the front, but, but grab those, about four different uh, published articles that we will review all this for you. Um, so all these things are shown to occur, thyroid resistance, emotional stress, depression, dieting, weight gain, leptin resistance, insulin resistance, obesity, diabetes, inflammation, autoimmune disease, systemic illness, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, so if there are Lyme in there, chronic pain, toxins, pesticides, plastics, all those show that the standard blood tests do not hold true. So, so what we were saying here, so here's a pituitary cell, T4, type 2 deiodinase, so let's, let's look at the other cell in the body first. So T4, uh, T4 goes into the cell, converts to T3 via type 1 deiodinase. All these conditions suppress the formation of type 1 deiodinase and suppress the activity, so less T4, T3. At the same time, they stimulate and upregulate type 2, so you get increased T4 to T3 conversion inside the pituitary. Okay, TSH goes down while the rest of the body, the intracellular T3 level goes down. Now, with all these chronic illnesses, it also as well as stimulating and activating um, diatonase type 2, it also does the same thing for diatonase type 3, which converts T4 to T3, to reverse T3. Pituitary doesn't have reverse T3. Reverse T3 then blocks the T3 receptor. It's a competitive inhibitor, blocks T4, T3 conversion, uh, lowers metabolism, does all those things. So let's look at a couple cases. So in this study, in Journal of Rheumatology, they looked at fibromyalgia patients, and they did TRH testing in them. So uh, this used to be done more routinely, but now they say, well, you don't need it because you have a highly sensitive TSH, which is crazy. So TRH testing, uh, thyroid-releasing hormone, you test it, you see what the response is, and that will tell you a much better test for who's hypothyroidism. In this study, they found that all the patients with fibromyalgia were low thyroid, even though they had normal blood tests, the normal range. In fact, they found the fibromyalgia patients had a TSH that averaged 0.86 versus normals were 1.42. And again, they had the high normal T4 and the low normal T3. So that's that classic picture that we see that we always think, oh, your thyroid's fine. Uh, so, you know, low normal TSH, high normal T4, low normal T3. And those are actually classically low. Study in the Lancet, a major medical journal. They took patients, they weren't, uh, a lot of them were chronic fatigue syndrome, but they were, main thing was just significant fatigue. They did thyroid biopsies in all of them. They found 40% had inflammation of the thyroid, while most of those were not positive for, for Hashimoto's with TPO or antithyroglobin antibodies. So all those patients would have gone undetected. Now, the interesting thing is they gave them thyroid, and they all responded regardless of their initial thyroid levels. So the, the uh, conclusion was TSH is a poor indicator of thyroid function and will not predict those who respond to thyroid replacement. The authors state, quote, after treatment with thyroxine, again, that's the best treatment, but they treated with that, 
clinical response was favorable, irrespective of baseline TSH concentrations. I mentioned PS, uh, uh, PMS, New England Journal of Medicine. They investigated the incidence of hypothyroidism in women with PMS using, again, TRH testing. They found that 94% of patients with PMS had thyroid dysfunction compared to 0% of asymptomatic normals. And 65% uh, had tests in the normal range that would, they wouldn't have been diagnosed. So they all had significant improvement in PMS by giving them thyroid. So usually with these patients, give them a little thyroid, a little progesterone, you're going to help the overall majority of those patients. Another study here, American Journal of Psychiatry, 70% of women had uh, PMS showed abnormal TRH testing, so showing low thyroid. Again, TSH would not detect it. Study in a journal of endocrine metabolism, they used, they looked to see at the accuracy of low thyroid, TSH uh, determining low thyroid in obese patients. They found that while TSH levels were not significantly different, 36% of the pa obese patients had severe dysfunction of the thyroid. So not just kind of low, but severe. So again, TSH failed, and again, the Journal of Clinical Endocrine Metabolism. Looking at things just like CRP, so inflammation, how does that affect the thyroid? This is well within a normal range, usually is, you know, less than three is normal, but here's free T3 levels within the normal range. You can see the, the difference here. How the more inflammation, the more hypothyroid. Another, another study looks exactly the same. And we reverse T3, again, you look in the textbooks, they'll say the endocrinologist will basically say, oh, just inactive metabolite. Well, no, it's actually a competitive inhibitor um, that uh, competes, it's, it goes, T3 and reverse T3, same thing, but a mirror image is backwards, so it goes receptor, sticks there, nothing happens. So yeah, it's not doing anything, but it's blocking the thyroid receptor. So all these references here, uh, showing that it, it's competitive inhibitor, suppresses T4, T3 conversion, uh, decreases cellular energy, so they infuse it into people, and metabolism just goes down. 